It's time for the galaxy to see that we are the true leaders of Mandalore. Welcome to Death Watch! Hey, wait a minute. You're all wearing the same helmet. You're all the same guy. You're all clones. You're all clones of each other. Look at you. You're all exactly the same. All right, who invited a confused Marvel Legends Spider-Verse figure into this? You just, oh, just, oh, oh, that's just, that's just, just great. Great. Okay, okay, everyone, yeah, 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 now this is a figure that I've been wanting for many years since I think I watched the Clone Wars in college pretty much. I was a little late to the game on that. I'm not a huge Clone Wars fan, but when it came to Prey Vizsla, easily one of my favorite characters in the animated mythos. But when it comes to the figure though, um, I really wanted to get him. But, however, despite what has been prefaced, he's got some problems and I wanted to talk about that a little bit. And there are issues that have been noted by other reviews out there, but I want to give my own unique take on it, just because I do like the figure for what it's worth, but there are definitely areas in this figure that just make you ask why. And before we get to those questions and we get to the flaws and some of the really great things about this figure, let's go ahead and start with the box. So it seems like Prey Vizsla is marking a triumphant return back to the traditional window box packaging. The green packaging wasn't quite working out, so that has been rolled out. And then this has been pretty much brought back. And it's pretty much exactly what you expect. There's no real changes or anything from, from what we were seeing before. But still, it's pretty nice and shiny, so what more can you ask for? You got... Star Wars Clone Wars, Prey Vizsla down there. Also a very beautiful silhouette of the figure over here on this side. Off to the back, you get the same picture once again. Pushing on in, we have some bios for this character, who's a little obscure for those who have not seen the show before, but pretty much he is a Mandalorian terrorist of the Death Watch, in fact, the leader of Death Watch from before the original trilogy era, and he was, of course, beheaded by Darth Maul, who then claimed the Mandalorian throne, resulting in one of the biggest arcs in animated history. But if we go on down, we have our usual case of negative three. Sword audience! Now here we are, the main figure with Prey Vizsla having all his gear removed, and here we have the first talking point about this figure being this very good head sculpt. Now one of the controversies here is of course this is the case of an animated figure being translated into live action format, and in this case for Prey Vizsla we've never seen him in live action format before, so it's pretty much up to Hasbro to figure out what he'd look like. And as for the head sculpt they went with, first of all it looks really good, it looks very human, um, I don't know how you do photo reel for a character who's never been seen as a human being before, but it's still a very beautiful portrait. You've got a little bit of a buzz cut over here, you got the beard, feels very militaristic, definitely gives off those tough guy vibes as this Mandalorian definitely should. Going all around, you got the rest of the blonde hair. And this head sculpt's really good, I don't mind it at all, although one of the critiques is that it does not really resemble his animated counterpart. I don't believe he had the stubble, and I believe he was totally bald at this point in the game. In fact, this was his second suit of armor in the show, and by this point in time, I don't think he had the scar. If he did, it was a lot more subtle. But in this case, I don't mind it, I, I like how it has a little bit of damage going on to give him some more history. I guess when I look at this figure, I less think of him during that final confrontation with Darth Maul, and more so, he's wearing the armor a little earlier than that, and at this point he has more hair, he has a deeper, more pronounced scar, so maybe this is just him kind of in the middle, in between um, getting this new suit of armor, and then finally dying at the hands of Maul. So, it really depends on the way you want to twist it. If you want something that's more screen accurate, this might be a big disappointment to you, but for me, I'm kind of okay with it. It's an artistic interpretation of him and it gives them a little bit more story. So really, it doesn't bug me that much. Now, something that does bug me and does bug many people, and it's something that I can't really excuse, is when we push out to the overall body. We're not going to go too deep into it because nope. it's a body we have seen before, very unfortunately. So you think, okay, it's a Mandalorian character. They're going to use one of the figures that we've seen recently to give him the most up-to-date, top-notch articulation. So I'm talking the Death Watch Mandalorian from the Mandalorian show. Maybe they could have gone with... um 
Axe Wolves, because they were pretty much the same body mold, or even the Re Return of the Jedi Boba Fett, I think, could have worked to some capacity. But instead, they went with the Jango Fett mold. And Jango is, we've talked about Jango Fett before, one of the most elusive figures in the line. And he's been released on two occasions, one standard, one for gaming greats. And on neither occasion was the articulation very good. It was a very limited, very primitive, and unfortunately, that translates right into this figure, because they used exactly all the same joints, which is really unfortunate, especially for this figure who is, or this character, rather, who's meant to be a lot more agile. I mean, he's got the dark saber and everything, he's got the blasters, he's got the jetpack, so you'd imagine with all that gear, he'd be able to do all the posing that you'd want, but because we're using such an old body, you are quite limited in the articulation department, but... That being said, he looks very good. So, uh, if you can start over here at the torso where you've got, I'm not sure if this is the Death Watch logo or if it's a logo specifically for him, but it looks very good. It's painted well. I'm not seeing any paint rub or anything like that. You can go push in a little bit. Uh, the color choice is very good. I like how you have the gray uh, body glove and you've also got the Durasteel looking, um, armor on top or what would it be, Beskar in this case, I suppose. I always get my Star Wars medals confused, but uh, it looks solid. Again, it's the exact same mold as Django Fett, nothing tweaked or changed or anything like that. But the blue is very good, contrasts very well with the dark silver you've got on the armor itself. Go around to the back. Um, actually, that's something I'm noticing now. They didn't paint the armor on the back. <laughs> That's kind of a flaw there. I guess it's something you could do on your own, but that's something they should have done anyways. I don't care that it's on the back. That's something that they should be doing regardless, right? I mean, when you got all the other armor pieces painted up, that should be continuing down to the back. So, all right, that's another thumbs down for me. That's really unfortunate to see. But... All right, let's try and keep things a little more optimistic by moving on to another negative with this figure. Um, because this is on the Django Fett body and not on one of the more modern builds that we've been seeing, when we get to the shoulders, you get the shoulder pads, but they are molded right onto that actual main figure. They're not floating or anything like that. And instead of the shoulder pad kind of gloving over on top of this lower neck area where the neck meets a shoulder, it moves inside the body, which doesn't look that great. Honestly, I don't mind that too much, but again, knowing the technological adva advancements they've made since they've done Django Fett last time, that's something they could have re-engineered or just have simply used an old, a newer body to accomplish, and um, I don't know why they didn't do that. I did hear from someone, I don't remember who, that the reason why they went with the older body is so that way Prey Vizsla could match in tandem with the Death Watch Mandalorian from the Clone Wars show, who also used the Django Fett body, but even then, I mean, he's a very important pivot character to Star Wars, at least in the Clone Wars era, so uh, it's not an excuse for me. It's not good enough, but anyways, moving on down, he also has two gauntlets, which are an exact match to Jango Fett's, and they are, they are not screen accurate, unfortunately, but I still like them. It doesn't bug me too much. Again, he's a Mandalorian. They can change out their gear, so I wouldn't put him past them for thinking, oh, well, maybe you just kind of swapped it out, but still would have been nice if they created some new molded pieces for this character, so that really stinks. Then you got the belt, you got two pouches over here. Um, that might be new, and I think the only new sculpted parts on this figure are the belt and then the thighs. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think those are new at least, so I'll give them props for that, because they're definitely different from Django Fett. I'm actually referencing my SH, my SH Figure Arts Django Fett, who's off to the side right now, who will be bringing in for size comparisons, and those definitely look different, so at least they did that much. But then that makes me think, well, if you could do that, why not go ahead and do the gauntlets as well? But Maybe that's nitpicking, I don't know if it's a cost-effective thing, but it still kind of sucks. But before we go any lower, another thing that I really don't like about the space body, which I've never handled before, by the way, is this really big gap that we have in between the abs and then the waist. I just feel like it's a little bit distracting, and it definitely breaks the immersion of this figure. I feel like the modern Mandalorians, they kind of have this ball joint coming up, but it's a more gradual sculpt piece in there that kind of helps it to merge with the rest of the body glove. But here, you just get a gap, and you get a very visible looking, like, sculpted detail. That's not a joint in there, that's sculpt. But it goes so deep in there, and I don't know why. But again, it's because of the older body mold. 
they shouldn't have done that. I mean, that's what I'm trying to say here. But moving on down, as I said, we have new um, thigh pieces. And this is one of the better sculpted details on this figure. Where you can, of course, slot in his two blasters, which we'll look at a little bit later. But then on the way down, it is just recycled Django Fit parts, which will yield more issues in the articulation department that we'll talk about. But we do have two knees. We got the two dart shooting areas off to the sides. Then you got shin guards. Then you got some foot guards over there. So um, that's pretty much it for the aesthetics of this figure to when he's not geared up or anything. He looks great, but the fact that he's on an older base body makes him very, very challenging. And speaking of that, uh, <laughs> I guess we're talking about the feet a little earlier than I thought. He is very, very annoying to stand up, and I don't know why. Um, again, older mold, but also when you put on the equipment, like the jetpack and the helmet and everything, it makes him all the more top-heavy. So as you go through this review, you're going to see that things just get more and more complicated and frustrating. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and look at accessories. So let's go ahead and gear up this mediocre Mando, I suppose starting with his jetpack, which honestly, I hate to say it, might be the best part of this figure. It's a totally unique sculpt, it's very accurate to the show, and it functions very well. Um, so here we are, it's a very different design from all the jetpacks we've seen in the past, totally unique. I don't know, I just really love the elongated shape that it has, as opposed to the really small Night Owl version, and it's not as conventional as the typical ones that we see with Django and Boba, for example. And down here at the thrusters, they are articulated, which is very good. And you do have some portholes if you have any exhaust effects, like we saw with the Deluxe Return of the Jedi Boba Fett, or perhaps the Mandalorian Dark Troopers, they'd also fit in. I don't have any on hand at the moment, but the portholes are there, so that's something you can do if you want to get them on a figure stand, that's probably where you'd be most at home. But pushing on in, we do have some little red accents going on there to give him a little more variation. And I do really love the contrast between the slate gunmetal gray and then the more silver tones that we have. I do think that makes this look like a much more compelling multi-component piece, if you will. Looks like it's made of different parts and not just one slate color, which cannot be said about the blasters over here, which we have seen before, I'm pretty sure, but repainted a little bit. Like, I think we've seen them with brown grips, um, silver barrels and all that, but here they're just done flat. They're identical, so real, really no differences to talk about here, but there are your blasters. So let's go ahead and put all these accessories on to start. So as for the jetpack, it's very simple. You got two slots, then you got a peg hole. Should be very familiar if you've worked with any Mandalorian figure from Black Series before. And that fits on very well, not falling out or anything, so that's really good. As for the blasters, you have a few options here. You can either put them in the holsters, so you could take uh, one blaster, and I guess we'll slide it into this one over here in anticipation for the Darksaber. It goes in no problem. And then we can take the other blaster, and then of course this is Django Fett's um, base body, and the hands are unchanged for better or for worse, so he can at least hold the blasters pretty well, as he's meant to, and that looks fine enough, so there we are there, looking pretty okay. Let's also have a look at the helmet, which I think is executed beautifully, looks fantastic. Up here we have another insignia, again I don't know if that's a Death Watch logo or if that one on the torso is, but it's painted well, it's got all the right colors, continues with that silver sheen that the rest of the armor has, going around, also looking really good. I don't know why, I really love this helmet in that it has these three antennae coming up, and I like that they're nice and stiff, they're not too bendy, not too soft or anything, they stand up and they stay there, which is very good. Um, for the sake of it, I'm going to look at the inside, it doesn't look like there's any sort of imprint for the face or for the top of the head or anything, but that being said, it still goes on to his head, no problem, so if you are one of the people who are disappointed by this head sculpt and would prefer something more screen accurate, Go ahead, just pop on the helmet, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So, um, for, for me, um, as you probably know by now, I'm a helmet type of guy, so he's probably always going to be wearing this anyways. But this helmet fits on very well. I like how it's not warped like Axe Wolves, who we talked about many times before, but it doesn't shake off, doesn't knock around when you tap it. It's a nice, secure fit. So, to their credit, they got that part right. So, that's very good to see. And the last accessory we have is, of course, the one that makes Brave Isla so badass for as short as we have him in the show. We have the heralded Darksaber. And, of course, for, for those of you who have not watched the show, Prey Vizsla is actually our introduction to this special Mandalorian weapon. Um, this is one that we've seen, I think, two other occasions in the Black Series line. The first time it was with Moth Gideon, and they did 
Moth Gideon. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> I need that photoshopped right now, but for we saw this with Moth Gideon, and it was like this tr really weird translucent plastic. Didn't quite work out. I actually wound up repainting that, so it was totally different. And I think we got it again in a deluxe um, Din Djarin set. And then here we are again the third time. And this time, I feel like they did it just right, or at least as good as they probably could. It's really hard to take that animated, swooshy-looking effect and translate it into plastic form. But here, they kept it, kept it simple, and it's what works. I mean, you got uh, the black blade, you got the white rim kind of glowing around it, I suppose, but it works really well. I think the best thing that they could do is make the black totally matte and then that would allow the black to feel a lot more distinct from everything else and not look as plasticky looking um i don't know what would be best i mean let me know in the comments what would be the best formula for producing a, a perfect black series dark saber i because still i'm not totally sure what that formula would be the hilt is also very good it's got that very um chiseled ornate design with that interesting looking handguard right there um one thing i don't love about this is with the blade it's not totally aligned with the grip it's a little bit turning up if you know what i mean right there so that's not perfect but that being said another cool thing you can do is you can remove the blade oh it's very tight so be careful there just give it a little rock and then you got the blade removed, then you got just the hilt there. And one thing you can do, although I've never tried this before, is you do have a little bit of a clip in the jetpack. I actually feel like it should be on this side. I could be wrong about that though, but should be able to take the hilt and put it in there. And it does not fit that great. Come on, Hasbro. Why are you rushing this guy? I, I don't know. I just feel like they really rush this guy out the door. There's so many little flaws and things that they could have done to upgrade him to make him one of the year's best. But that's just not the case for this guy. It's really unfortunate. I know we keep talking about it, but it, like, it's hard to ignore the problems with this guy uh, because it's such a dated body. And as for the updated things that they could be doing, they're not as good as they could be. It's just what could have been with this figure. That's what keeps me like going back to critiquing this guy. But anyways, back to the dark saber, damn it. Uh, you can go ahead and get that in his hand and it's not a perfect fit. Again, they're both blaster hands. They're Django's hands. So they're not meant to hold anything cylindrical. It's meant to just hold um, the grip of a firearm, but still it fits in okay. I feel like after you play around with him for a while, it does kind of slot out a little bit. And I also feel like the blade is a little bit short, just like a tad short, but like if it came out to right here, I think that'd be just right. I actually feel like the Gideon one was a little bit longer, but then again, it's a lightsaber. They have adjustable lengths or, and stuff like that, so maybe that would be okay if you thought of it that way, but um, that, that's what I was talking about right here. This is a perfect moment to talk about that matte black I was discussing. The light isn't really hitting the blade, but because of that, it makes it feel a little bit more out of this world, if you get what I mean. Almost... Like, it doesn't belong in the animation that it was in. Like, that's the best way I could describe the Darksaber. Now it feels like it doesn't belong to this character. Um, it belongs to a different animated style. That's what I'm trying to say. But um, without that sheen, that glossiness, you see if I turn it around, without that, it feels a little bit more flat and it stands out a little bit more. It's more pronounced. But anyways, that's it for accessories. And, oh, one other thing I wanted to mention, the jetpack does have a removable rocket, so you could take that out if you want, maybe use a wire, have it shooting out at someone, but that is an option. And that pretty much closes it out for Prey Vizsla. Now that I have him unarmored, once again, we can go ahead and talk about accessories. We have very, very basic ball joint in the head because, again, we don't have the dumbbell joint yet with that old Django Fett body. How many times have I said that? Let me know in the comments and you get a gold star. But you can go that much down, which is actually great. And then you can also go that much up, which is fantastic for a jetpack character. So that's... Honestly, the only reason why using this old body mold is a benefit to Prey Vizsla, but other than that, nothing really else to speak of. Um, he has not really any tilt, but he's got all the swivel that you want, so that's good to see. Shoulders, we kind of already talked about, go 360. They come out that much, pretty much to 90. The elbows suck, though. They come up to um, a little bit past... I passed a little before 90. I don't know what the word. It's an obtuse angle. It's not 90 at all. Um, you do have a bice, not a bicep swivel. Is, is that a bicep? Tricep swivel? Is that what you'd call it? Yeah, you got a lower swivel on the upper arm to compensate for the wiring that we have that's connecting to the gauntlets, which is very good. Um, that means it's not going to be breaking or anything, so you don't need to worry about that. 
So if you just want to articulate the gauntlet, then it actually carries the wires with it rather than stressing them, which is very nice. So that that's a nice little thing that carried on from Django. As for the gauntlets here, we do have a swivel hidden right behind that elbow joint, so that's nice to see. Both hands swivel and they hinge in and out, which is unfortunate because we don't have up and down for the dark saber. so that's a little bit of a bummer. Nothing at all in the torso. As for the waist, um, you've got... I don't know what's going on in there. It might be a ball joint. I think... I think it's a ball joint. Yeah, you can go pretty much a little bit of ways forward and back. It does have the swivel, though, at least. As for legs, they kick out that much. The blaster doesn't get in the way. It pretty much stops at that um, thigh armor right there. But you do have a thigh swivel as well. Also have double jointed knees, although I find it takes a little bit of effort to get that upper joint going. Like when you start bending, it instinctively wants to move the lower joint. Want to get the upper one going, though. Got to push it a little bit. And then everything goes back, but it goes all the way, so that's a nice articulation point, I suppose. Then down to the feet, you have not much back, which is actually great, but the forward is terrible. It stops right here where the two armor pieces meet, although you can kind of force the lower armor over the shin armor right there, so you can kind of do that. And then you do have some pretty good rocker. It's pretty unrestrained, so you at least have that. But still, with all the gear on, let me go ahead and pop off, pop on, excuse me, the drip pack and the helmet. And then if you just want to stand them up in a vanilla pose, forget about it. The feet are way too tiny, and it's just very difficult to do. He keeps wanting to fall back. Um, sometimes you hit a sweet spot, like right here, but like if you look down, you got the feet right there. And if you want him like leaning forward a little bit, and then, I guess, like, if you want them to do anything that's more dynamic, for some reason there's a gumminess in the feet that really prevent him from doing the standing that you want. Um, so he's definitely going to need a figure stand or something like that. I think a lot of it is because you have these studs on the bottom of the shoes. And combined with that, and the fact that you can't really move the feet too much forward... That makes this figure very difficult to work with. Like, despite all the flaws, I was hoping that the feet would at least allow him to stand well. But, unfortunately, we don't really even get that. So, I don't know. I love and I hate it, this figure at the same time. But there are definitely things that they could have done to make this one of the best figures that we've seen in the Black Series. But, sadly, not the case. Here we are in size comparisons where I actually managed to get previously on a two-handed pose of the Darksaber, so there was that, I guess. So starting off with two Black Series comparisons, we have the Return of the Jedi Boba Fett, and of course Prey Vizsla's killer Darth Maul, or rather just Maul at this point in the story. But yeah, they size up very well together. It also sizes up really good with some Japanese brands over here to the right. We have the SH Figuarts, um, excuse me, Django Fed, his dad, who still remains one of my favorite figures that we've reviewed on this channel, and they scale together very well. And we also have the Boba Fett model kit, this time repainted to be Jodo cast. And then down here we have Star Wars The Black Series, Mechamuck! You're not worthy of your armor. Mandalorian or not, at least I'm a good father. Being a father means nothing compared to bleeding the Death Watch. Now oh, come on guys, you all at least have one thing in common. <laughs> 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 You see, no need to lose your heads. Whew, that one was a doozy. I, I don't know what it is with this figure. I almost want to describe him as a figure that I love to hate, which I've never said or thought about a figure before, but there's just something about the combination between him being a very anticipated character in the Black Series, also being a Mandalorian, also being from the Clone Wars, the fact that he wields a Darksaber, just all these little factors about him that make him so hyped. But then we finally got him, and we're all just collectively like, what went wrong here? There's so many little things. I mean, the biggest thing being that the entire body is reused, except for a few little details down here towards the waist and the thigh area. But... And then beyond that, it's just like all these little articulation nuances, uh, just armor that doesn't match up, a whole new head sculpt that we're not too familiar with, a dark saber that's a little too short, a jetpack that makes him wicked top heavy, some feet that make him impossible to stand. There's just a lot of little tiny things, which I don't mind. In a really weird world, I'm able to excuse those things because I enjoy the figure enough. There are still enough nuances and creative choices made with this figure that still allow me to enjoy him a pretty good deal. 
It's just a fuss to get him doing whatever it is that I want him to be doing. Duffy looking forward to getting him on a figure stand, seeing him fly around. Again, they were kind enough to at least put on the portholes for the thrusters, so you can at least have him going airborne. And then a lot of the articulation and standing issues that he has won't even matter at that point. The Darksaber is overall an improvement. The jetpack is certainly a standout, even though it is on the back and you can't see it. But still, they missed paint on the back armor plating, which was really odd. I didn't even notice that till this review. Um, and there's a lot of little, tiny little things that do drive me crazy about this figure. But crazy in love with it, too. It's, it's such a weird relationship. I don't know, I guess the anticipation for it is what allows me to excuse everything. But... Really, I don't know. I, what, the best I can do is just leave it up to you. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments because it's such a weird, weird figure. Such a strange combination of things old and new that just don't really gel together and also kind of do. <laughs> I, I don't know where else I'm going with this, but it's just an odd figure. And do I recommend him? I do, in spite of all the things that we talked about. I mean, first of all, I don't think they're going to do another Prey of Isla, even though there is an alternate look for him. But even if they did do that, I feel like they'd just use the exact same body again, so what would be the point? And second, he's still an interesting experience of a figure. He still has a lot of fun accessories, um, and then he's got the old body, so it's weird to kind of mer look at something that's old and new at the same time and just see how it functions. Like, the paint's well done, aside from that backplate as we talked about, but everything else is kind of, it's as good as you can make it. And you know what? I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm going to keep talking in circles at this point. But that being said, if you enjoyed this review, then please, as per usual, be sure to like, comment, ring the bell to be notified of our latest arrivals, and subscribe. This is the editor speaking, humbly reminding you to support the pod Patreon in the description to guarantee new content every single week. Thank you guys very much for watching. Rock on, and I will see you all later.